So today we're having the initiation. 
initiation is uh, part of the process of devotional service mentioned in the Nectar of Devotion, Rupa Goswami uh, has described in his book Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and Srila Prabhupada summarized that book in his writing of the Nectar of Devotion and he lists the different items of devotional service. He lists, he lists the different items of devotional service and he describes the first the first three are all in relation with spiritual master, that we should take the shelter of a spiritual master and we should inquire from him and we should render service to him and we should also take initiation. So initiation is only one part of the process. There are many other parts. And the initiating spiritual master, he is just doing one function, but there are many other functions required. So the spiritual master is not one. And that when we give initiation, we shouldn't think that that uh, disciple has become obliged totally to the initiating spiritual master, because there are many spiritual masters. We describe the person who brings us to Krishna consciousness initially. Maybe somebody gives us a book or something. Then he is also like the guru. He is called Vartma Pradaksha Guru. And then there is Chaitya Guru, the guru in the heart. And there is also Guru Pat Patni, right? There is also there are different spiritual masters in the realm of devotional service particularly important is the Shiksha Guru and the Diksha Guru. So before Diksha first comes Shiksha. First of all we have to take in instruction. Uh, we encourage devotees coming to the Krishna consciousness movement that the first thing they should do is to take shelter of Srila Prabhupada because Srila Prabhupada's position is unique. He is the founder Acharya and as the founder Acharya he is the preeminent Shiksha Guru for all the members of ISKCON and for all time. As long as ISKCON exists, Srila Prabhupada will be the Shiksha Guru. And there will be many people also who are not in ISKCON who may also consider Srila Prabhupada to be their Shiksha Guru. So, the, the job of Shiksha Guru is very essential, very important because we need a lot of help in our practical, in the practical parts of devotional service. Bhakti Vinod Thakur actually says that more, uh, he said that he considers the, the Shiksha Guru to be more important than the Diksha Guru because the Shiksha Guru is the one who is helping with all the daily affairs of devotional service the different problems which come up in the course of time. Now, it would be ideal if the initiating spiritual master can also be giving instruction. But that's not always possible. Many initiating spiritual masters are very busy, have many responsibilities and different areas in which they are required to travel. It's not always possible that the initiating spiritual master can simply stay in one place. That would be very nice, but it's not always possible. Particularly also because the, the job of spiritual master is usually done by sannyasis, although other people may also be spiritual masters, but in general it's the job of the spirit of the sannyasis to be spiritual masters. And sannyasis are usually obliged to travel more for the sake of preaching and propaganda purposes, to push on the Krishna consciousness movement and expand the mission of Krishna consciousness. They have to travel, they have to go around, visit different places. So therefore, in the absence of the Diksha Guru, it may be necessary, it's necessary to have shiksha, to take instruction from 
senior Vaishnavas. And before initiation, we also take instruction from senior Vaishnavas. First we take instruction, and then after taking instruction for some time, then we have become ready for initiation. So this is a pro general procedure. That we say, first of all, take shelter of Srila Prabhupada and read Srila Prabhupada's books and become familiar with the society of ISKCON and how it functions and what are the different rules and regulations and how is it managed, how is it arranged, and what different activities do they have. Now, in other words, know more about what's going on within the society. And uh, it, in the course of doing that, we will also be meeting different devotees and we will be attending programs and hearing their lectures. And that's very important for us. We have to regularly attend the functions and listen to the classes. You have to hear the lectures. I was explaining to one devotee just today the importance. I said, don't just read the book yourself, but you know, share it with your wife also. Because your wife may be very busy taking care of a child. So remember, you're also like her guru. You have to read together. You make a point to read Prabhupada's books together. Actually, the whole family should get in the habit of doing that. Sitting and reading together. And Prabhupada also tells us more important than reading the books is discussing them together and explaining them. Uh, the other day, Padma Mataji brought her grandson over to meet me and he had some incredible questions, you know, very intelligent questions for a young boy, you know, who, who had never really been to any of our Krishna conscious programs. But his questions were very thought-provoking, thought very, uh, revealed his high intelligence, you know, very nice. So even young children, often they have many nice questions and we want to encourage them to you know, put these questions. Often we find children will come with questions and their parents will say, don't bother me. <laughs> you know? Because often the parents are not able to answer. And so Padma herself didn't feel so comfortable answering, so she brought it to me. And that's how it should be. You make a note of the questions. And next time you meet the devotees and you can ask these questions. There are many things which we don't know and which we need to find out. So it's good to inquire. Actually, it's the duty of the disciple to inquire before the spiritual teacher. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Tadvidi Pranipatena Pari Prashnena Sevaya. Pariprasna, asking questions. This is the, business, the duty of the disciple. And the spiritual master is pleased when the disciple has questions like that. It's very nice because it gives him an opportunity to speak more about the science of self-realization and about the process of Krishna consciousness. And that's what he wants. You know, if he says any questions and everybody looks down, you know. <laughs> And everybody thinks it's time for prasadam. You know? <laughs> so then you think, oh. <laughs> yeah. but uh, when there are questions, then it's very nice. And the duty of the disciple is to bring up questions so that they are clearer about the process of Krishna consciousness. So we see there there are many initiating spiritual masters in Iskon, maybe more than 100 nowadays. And not all are sannyasis, some may also be brahmacharis, and grihastas, and vanaprastas, because the ashram is not important. The job of spiritual master can be, should be done by all the senior Vaishnavas. Lord Chaitanya instructed everyone to become spiritual master. Uh, Lord Chaitanya said, Kipa vipra kirbanasi sutra kini nai ye krishna tattvavet se guru hai. Yeah. It does not matter what position you're in, in the society, but if you know the science of Krishna, if you know the Krishna Tattva, then you should become spiritual master. And 
spiritual master is not just may not be giving initiation because it's not usually the custom for a disciple to initiate in the presence of his spiritual master. So long as the spiritual master is alive, it's not usually the custom that the disciple will initiate. Sometimes it happens. I was in Russia, for example, and uh, there was one devotee there. He's a Vanaprastha. Uh, his new, and he he, he is a disciple of Jaipataka Swami Maharaj, but he's also initiated. Because he's traveling in Russia, remote regions of Russia, where Jaipataka Swami could never go. And Jaipataka Swami has a lot of disciples also. So he's, he's given that devotee, who's a very senior man, and he's just preaching. He's a tra traveling around with his wife, and he travels around, gives lectures and so on, he accepts disciples with the permission of his spiritual master. So sometimes it may be a lot, but generally, so long as the spiritual master is alive, the disciple will not. Prabhupada did not authorize any of his disciples to initiate, so long as he was present. But before his departure, he selected a few people who said, after I'm gone, they can initiate. And he said also more people can be added. So like this, uh, we want you to understand it's not only Diksha Guru. Sometimes within ISKCON, we tend to give too much importance to the Diksha Guru. And we often neglect, sometimes we, we forget about the Shiksha Guru. So the Shiksha Gurus also, they play an even more important role than the Diksha Guru. Because sometimes we give initiation and then we don't see that disciple for a long time. We're not able to see them. And sometimes also Diksha Guru may leave the body. And that happens also. Some people were initiated and then a few days later the person who gave them initiation left the body. Suddenly. So what do they do? They have to take shelter of another senior Vaishnava. They don't take initiation again. They've already taken initiation, but they have to take shelter. They need to be guided and trained by a Shiksha Guru. And that should be a living person as well. Just as to get initiation, initiation has to be given by a living person. In the same way, instruction also should come from a living person. We can get a lot of instruction also from Prabhupada's books. Now Prabhupada's not living, but still there are many things in Prabhupada's books which we need to understand and which sometimes need clarification. Everything has to be understood according to time and place and circumstance. So it's important for us that there's also a, a living person guiding us, directing us. Just like myself, I was initiated by Srila Prabhupada. But Prabhupada never gave me any instruction. And Prabhupada left the world. And after Prabhupada left the world, then I thought, I've not got any instruction. What am I going to do? And so then I got the inspiration that I should take shelter of Tamal Krishna Goswami, who had been Prabhupada's secretary and servant. and was very senior within the society. So I took shelter of him and he helped me, guided me, guided me a lot, and gave me a lot of a benefit, a lot of guide, instruction, a lot of uh, purification, how I could better serve Krishna. But then he also left the world. I, I, I was serving him for about 20 years. And uh, although he was my god brother, I was very, I often, would refer to him as Guru Dev. Although he was not my Diksha Guru, but he was very much my Shiksha Guru. But then he left the world. And then after he leaves the world, I still need, although I'm myself, I'm initiating, I'm accepting disciples, but I also need association with senior Vaishnavas. So I, I go and associate with my senior God brothers, and I get guidance from them instruction from them and they help in many ways. 
So we want you to understand the process. Uh, guru, it's not just only the Diksha Guru. But there are many people involved. Just like today, Vijamatiri is taking initiation, mm -hmm. but she has also her Shiksha Guru. Right? She's been getting a lot of instruction from the senior Vaishnavas here. So we're very grateful to them also for doing that work. That without that help of instruction, then we wouldn't be able to give the initiation because the faith would never become uh, solidified. It's important for us, association, to be part of a group, just like Padma gets a, you get a, a help. And you get you were brought to Krishna consciousness by Sri Radhika Mataji, I think, yeah. And she, you you still associate with her, and you keep contact with her, and she guides you, helps you, like that. So she's doing work like that, of Shiksha Guru. You know? So we we all have that this kind. Of, sometimes we don't always appreciate it. Sometimes you know, but we should actually try to see that they, this, without that help, our Krishna consciousness would be very shaky, very difficult. So, so we're very grateful to all the devotees in Dhammadardesh here, that they provide a nice uh, organization and many nice programs for all the children and the youth and the ladies and everything. So many different programs are going on. And that helps a lot for people to develop their faith in Krishna consciousness. Without that, it's very difficult to become strong in Krishna consciousness. So this uh, is a wonderful congregation here, and so many things have been achieved. And it's a great inspiration for other parts of the world. So we ask Vijit, you can come forward and. You first. One question. Uh, yes. So you took uh, uh, initiation from Prabhupada. Yes. But before, before that, mm -hmm. uh, apart from Tamil Krishna Prabhu, do you have any Shiksha Guru before that? Uh, Shiksha Guru. Yes, we, we all have Shiksha Guru. I didn't think of them as like my Shiksha Guru. But afterwards, you know, because this, this, is, this concept of Shiksha Guru is mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. But it's not something we were particular, we were only thinking Diksha. Now Prabhupada said, during his time, he said, I am the Shiksha and Diksha Guru for my disciples. You see? But after Prabhupada left, then it's different. But during Prabhupada's time, uh, some devotees were recognizing senior devotees and worshipping them and Prabhupada stopped it. He said, no. He said, I am the Shiksha Guru and Diksha he, he didn't think the devotees were ready for that. So, but after Prabhupada's departure, yeah, I, I said, yeah, I, I took shelter to Mount Krishna Goswami. We have to recognize the senior Vaishnavas like that. We respect them. <coughs> Within the ISKCON, there is an authority structure. Some devotees are engaged in managing. And some others, some others are engaged in preaching. But we should respect both authority systems. Some people are directly engaged in the managing, the finances, and hand, handling pr devotees, and places, and so many things. So it takes a lot of work. It's not difficult. It's not easy, rather. It takes a lot of work. Make sure the funds to pay for everything. You have to make sure the pro everything's ready for the program. For example, we went to region school, but there was a lot of work to bring everything over there and set up the lights and the sound system, and it was done very well. Govinda Maharaj could come and have a nice kirtan and everything. But you know, we don't think about all the hours that went into getting ready for the program. We just come along and, oh, okay, give obeisances. But so many things to organize, the prasadam, and the distribution of the prasadam, and then bring the deities and prepare the deities, decorate them and everything, and put new dresses on all the deities. And so it's a lot of work. And then afterwards, then, there's more work. You have to clean up everything again and 
make that school look like it was never touched, you know, put it back to normal. So it's a lot of effort managing and working with devotees sometimes is difficult. <laughs> sometimes it can be very trying, working with devotees. So we have to respect both the, both structures, the preacher, we only see some, you know, the preachers come, they give the, we don't think about all the behind the scenes, the people who organize everything. But they're also our authorities, you know, so we should also try to cooperate with the managers. You know, people will ask, can you come and help cook, Maraji? Could you come and make some garlands, Maraji? We need this, you know. You know, there's so many things to be done. And we should appreciate how much is required. So we're, we're encouraging the devotees like that uh, to be cooperative within the ISKCON managerial structure and uh, don't just only think about the, the preachers, <laughs> but remember there's a lot of other people involved. And we have to try to cooperate. Is it okay? Yes. Any more questions? We should, no, we were there as a Shiksha Guru, what the management level people, what should, how should we give them, respect them and... Yeah, they're, well, they're also giving instructions in many ways. They're also like Shiksha Gurus. You know? They're doing a lot of things, you know. The, the, the man, although it may seem like managerial, but it's very much related to our preaching, to the preaching programs. You know, you know generally there's a temple president, and there are GBC, and there are regional secretaries, like that. There's a Brahminical council, and so on. You know, all these people, these are all responsible positions. And they, they're, they're giving instruction, they're guiding people. We may not see them directly like Shiksha Gurus, but uh, we should respect their authority. That's the point. We, we should respect the authority. It's not necessary that you have to worship the Shiksha Guru, but you may do if you like. Yes, we get knowledge from them. But the qualification for Shiksha Guru is the same as the qualification for the Diksha Guru. The qualifications. So those qualifications are described. So some people may, they may not be fully on that, may not be fully totally on that level, fully, but they may be still, their instructions may be very valuable. So we have to be able to discriminate different devotees and give respect for them. That's it, the point. Be respectful and cooperative remember it's a big society and with many people involved and don't just only think only my guru my guru <laughs> you know this this sometimes is a problem you just think my guru my guru and some people even there are temples uh, and when the guru comes oh all the disciples come when the guru is not there they never come <laughs> and there's so many things to be done in the temple and where is everybody Oh, there's nobody there, you know, no, who's going to worship the deity, no, no, no. But when the Guru comes, everybody says, I'll cook, I'll do it, uh, yeah. everybody wants to be there. So these kind of things are not very good, you yeah. see. It shouldn't be like that. I have one question, because since uh, uh, Shiksha Guru is uh, just you say it because we should not be saying all the time, my Guru, my Guru, my Guru, and then sometimes we don't have this disciple meeting, but sometimes it so happens like, you know, the interrelationship between the God brothers and God sisters, it doesn't become strong. 
So, what is your opinion about this? Well, we give more importance to the relate to the relationship of all the devotees. We don't just want, we don't want to make a group so much within the society. It's better that we're one family under Prabhupada. Uh, of course, we can have a little group that you know. A, a Depending on the, on the Maharaj. Yeah. Depending on the Maharaj, they have on a sect over here. That's what it works. That's what I've seen. Yeah, but so, sometimes that can be a problem. That sometimes, you know, that we become, you know, we're, this is only for my God brothers and my Guru Maharaji's disciples. And we make a group. But it can weaken, it can weaken our society because, I mean, there's, and they told me like Bhaktivika Swami, his disciples, they have a meeting and they listen to his lecture. But anybody can come. It's not private. It's not only for his disciples. Anybody wants to come, they can come. And they're just going to play a tape of Bhaktivedanta Swami giving a class and they'll listen to it. So like that, that's okay. But if you have a separate group and you're making plans, what you're going to do, like this and that for, you know, for your Guru Maharaj and, you know, and you're promoting, you want to promote your Guru over others, then sometimes that it can be a problem. I also want to know, see, when they have the different gurus, I cannot take church in different, like Bhakti Vikas, different, Chaya Pataka, do you have to wait till they invite you, or if you're here, you can go on your own, because you won't hear the lecture? You can inquire uh, with the local authorities, and yeah, they, they, they go. We, I also go. Yeah, to because Bhakti. sometimes I also want to go, but then I feel they have not called, is it okay, my, correct, my going, because I also yeah, we take permission from them, and yeah. then we go. We give the example that a bundle of sticks together is very, you can't break it easy. But one stick is easy to break, right? One stick, so that's, we want to make our movement very strong. And the more we're united, the stronger we will be. So we, we do worry about schisms, making gr little splinters and groups within the society. You want to keep the society strong and try to unite the devotees. You want, you want every devotee to feel a part of the one family. Like say, when someone is having a Mangal Arti in the morning, right? If you want to attend it, even if you are not called, is it okay attending? I mean, like people get offended. Sometimes, you know, these things uh, hold you back. Generally, uh, all the programs are open mm -hmm. just to keep restrict uh, the, uh, because of the space constraint. People generally make sure that you know sometimes they invite the good friends, close friends. Mm -hmm. But if we have so many times, we get new people, yeah. and we invite. We we happy with to have them. So for that person, you ask somebody. No, we, you somebody who's going, mm -hmm. we can check with that person if he's okay, and then you know if he if he thinks that it's only private, private, mm -hmm. then he would tell you. And if if he is willing to check with the uh, this thing, then he checks. Or sometimes we just get walk-ins, just like uh, people just come in because it's not uh, any hiding hidden pro agenda we have. This is just to glorify Lord. We want to serve, but that restricts the number of prasadam and management. And uh, that for management sake, they invite you know because I will cook for hundred and only. If uh, 200 comes, then yeah. what do I do? No, it's not the, you see, sometimes it's, it's not the prasadam. It's just what you want, it's just that you feel nice about attending the arti. No, no, not you are thinking, but as a, for me Artists. to attend, yeah. to invite the 200 people, I yeah. have only space for 100, so I'll invite only 100. But then uh, there will be a lot of no-shows, people may not come, so that compensates mm -hmm. if num somebody comes without invitation. But if I have to tell everybody to come, then I am yeah, not able to serve them. Maharaj, can I say something? Yes. I think uh, moreover, even uh, though we are associating on a spiritual platform, it is very important to maintain the courtesy level. You know? As a matter of courtesy, even if you want to attend a Mangala Aarti, if you are not invited and you are keen on inviting, it is always better to take permission and then attend, as a matter of courtesy. Am I right? Yes.
that's so, but like you're supposing, like you, like you're supposing you don't know the organizer or you can't, if, I, if, if another person who's invited, if that person says, why don't you also join? So you say, I don't know that person. I think best is person. to avoid any kind of uh, your sentiments being heard. Best is you get up at home, you know, get up early, you do yourself, you can do mangla at home, you know, and follow the whole temple. Uh, uh, structure, you know. No, that's what we do. See, but sometimes we come across. It situations. may not always be ideal to congregate and uh, do mangla arti. You know? yeah. Ten out of eight out of ten times, you may be able to. On two occasions, you may not be. Yeah. So you have to understand that and you no, know, manage. That is okay. But see, sometimes of course these things don't happen always. Like sometimes you come across a friend who really insists that you come. So now you're torn between what you So you can ask that friend, can you yes. please as a matter of courtesy, ask, ask the ask host if I can be present, yeah. check on that and then attend. Okay. That's more ideal. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. But sometimes, you know, you, you're caught in a concern. Generally, devotees yeah. don't don't uh, show any kind of resentment mm -hmm. if there is an uninvited yes. devotee. Yeah. They always like devotees being present. But as Prabhu said, you know, uh, space constraints, yeah. Yeah, 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 space constraint can be a major hurdle. Like I have, I, I stay in a studio flat. I cannot uh, uh, so have the whole congregation at my place for, for Mangala. Yeah. So it's not practical. From a practical perspective, you have to uh, take decisions on your own and see how best it can suit. This is a unique program which you're having in Dubai. We don't have this going on other places, Mongol Arti every, in different devotees' homes. It's not common. Yeah. Usually Mongol Arti is in the temple. Okay. In the temple, everyone's welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so come. You have to take your vows, right? So you have to offer obeisances first. That's it. So, hello. Okay. Offer your obeisances to Prabhupada. When you when you offer obeisances, you have to recite Srila Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra. Say it out loud. Okay. So what are the four regulated principles you're going to follow? No meat, no intoxication. Only meat? No meat, fish, everything. No intoxication, no, uh, no illicit sex, no gambling. Okay, and every day you chant? 16 rounds. Yes, okay, so your name, is, we give you a name. Vrindavan Vilasini. Hare Krishna. So I hope you like that name. It's different from your name. Vrindavan Vilasini Devi Dasi Ki Jai. Jai. His Holiness Vignana Shak Swami Maharaj Ki Jai. Go back to Vrinda Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay, so we can have some prasadam now? Yeah. Prasadam is on the way. It's on the way, huh? Prasadam is not here. here. Prasadam is not here yet. Stop <laughs> Thanks.